Hey everyone, my name is Courtney and welcome back to my channel. I am here with my liquid courage as always for these sit down videos and today I thought that I would give some bookish recommendations for the mothers out there. This is my first Mother's Day since actually becoming a mom, so I am very excited to celebrate and I love any excuse to recognize and honor the women that are in my life personally. However, I do know that Mother's Day comes with a lot of complicated feelings for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. So if you are one of those people, I see you. Please feel free to take these recommendations with a grain of salt. They don't have to literally be for a mother. I hope maybe you just find a great book recommendation for yourself or someone you know. I should really be cleaning my house right now. I have some friends coming to town this weekend, but I really wanted to get this up. This gives you guys at least a week to do some book shopping. I am going to have all of these linked below. I have mentioned it before, but I have affiliate links through bookshop.org. I love shopping through Bookshop instead of like Amazon because you can support your independent bookstores directly. They put a lot of funds into your local indies that we love. So please feel free to shop using those links. Hopefully they get there on time, but if not, your mom has probably forgiven you for worse things. I have some general recommendations. I also have some recommendations for my own personal mom. And then I put a question box on my Instagram asking my friends for book recommendations that they want specifically for their mom, fitting different themes and interests and things like that. So I thought we would start at the very beginning of motherhood with the mothers who are expecting currently. For the mothers who are still expecting, I would recommend Nurture by Erica Chidi Cohen. This book was basically my Bible for my entire pregnancy. I really wanted to have a mindful experience in pregnancy and labor, and this book is perfect for that. It has your month by month development guides for your growing baby, and it has so much more. There are recipes that adjust to your growing nutrient needs. There are checklists for things to ask your provider. There are checklists for packing your hospital bag, things that you actually need at your house for when baby comes home. And there are lots of exercises, labor positions, journal prompts. There's so many different ways for you to relate this to your own pregnancy. I just thought it was a really beautiful guide. It's not condescending at all. It's not that really corny sort of voice that we associate with some other mom-focused reading materials. Looking at you, what to expect when you're expecting. This I do feel like is the modern day version of, you know, the books that our moms before us read and I just really thought that this was a, such a valuable book. The next book that I wanted to recommend was for the recent mothers out there. And I've mentioned this before in my rating video. I will probably mention it a million times more because I love it so much. And that is Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. I finally have a hard copy of this. I am so excited. My husband actually reached out to Rachel Yoder herself and told her how much I love this book and what a fan I am. And he asked her if she would go to her favorite local bookstore and sign a copy and send it to me. And she did. She sent this from Prairie Lights Bookstore in Iowa City and she signed it to me. So this has honestly become a new prize possession. Like if my bookshelf was about to catch on fire, this is probably the book that I would grab. And she wrote, Courtney, embrace the transformation. I read Night Bitch when I was maybe two months postpartum, and it is just such a confusing time. You're getting so many unsolicited tips from people. You are not sleeping a lot. You are really grappling with who you were, who you want to be, who you're becoming that you don't fully know yet. And this book, I think, perfectly captures that feeling, that moment, and it gives 
new mothers especially something to really feel empowered about and really harnesses the magic that is giving birth and bringing life into this world. Night Bitch is about a woman who is a stay-at-home mom to her son. She used to work in a gallery, she wanted to be an artist, and since her husband made more money, had better benefits, yada yada yada, she decides to be the stay-at-home parent, and in that really sort of loses touch with herself. She isn't sure what kind of woman she is anymore. The person that she was feels light years away and it's sort of at this realization that she starts to feel like she's turning into a dog. As she's going through this transformation, her son is recognizing this new side of her. He loves playing dog with her. She feels like she's actually becoming a better mother. The transformation that she goes through in this book is so stunning. You know, it sounds weird, woman turning into a dog, but really it's the story of her transformation coming back into herself as an artist, as a fully formed and realized woman, including and beyond her child. I already started going through this copy to underline some of the passages that I had highlighted in the ebook from the library, and I just wanted to read one for you that I am really connecting with on this Mother's Day. At times, she terrified herself wondering if she was a god, if being a mother was one way of being a god. Of course, she couldn't strike anyone down with a lightning bolt, but she could bring a person into being using little more than a handful of clay. Way less, in fact. How were mothers even a thing? How had they not been outlawed? They were divine, beyond horrifying. <laughs> Literal goosebumps. Even if you're not a mom, I think you'll find a lot of value in this book, but especially for new mothers, I think there is so much to grab hold of within this book and really start to feel fucking powerful with the fact that you just did that shit. Before I get into the recommendation request that I had gotten on Instagram, I also wanted to recommend a few books to my own mother. My mom has also been a reading nerd for as long as I can remember. This woman reads books so freaking fast, like speed reader extraordinaire. I would say that her personal favorite genre would be what my siblings and I called nipple books. For as long as I can remember, my mom has loved Harlequin books. She's always had them on her nightstand. She gets paper bags full of them from the hospital book sales, from the library. She reads through them so fast that if I had to think of my mom's reading history, it's really just a slideshow of bodice ripping covers. And my sister and I always thought it was a little bit funny when we were younger. We'd, you know, open a page and it would be a very breathless scene. We would then give the book to my little brother who would just look be learning how to read. He would be reading these scenes of intense kissing and passion and at one point he read a scene involving nipples and it stuck. Harlequin books to me have always been known as nipple books. But she likes some thrillers and things like that as well. I just recently recommended Verity to her and she read it within a day, of course, and also really liked it. Because she loved Verity so much, the first book that I am going to recommend to my mother is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. I think this sort of hits similar notes to Verity, but I actually think Behind Her Eyes had a way bigger twist, was a lot more shocking, and this is about a woman who is having an affair with her married boss, and she keeps running into his wife everywhere and she doesn't know how the wife knows where she is and she feels weird building that connection but as she gets closer to the wife she starts to be a little bit more skeptical of this man she's been having an affair with so she's having this relationship while also building this friendship with his wife. If you look through any reviews for this book, you will see WTF, that ending, and that's for a good reason. So mom, I really think you would like Behind Her Eyes. It also has a Netflix show now, and I know how much you love to binge TV, so 
The next book that I would recommend to my mom, I haven't actually read yet, but I really want to read it. So I think I will get us both copies for Mother's Day so we can read it together. And that is From Lukov with Love by Mariana Zapata. This book is a big bitch. It's super long, but from what I've heard, Mariana Zapata is the queen of the slow burn. This is a romance book about figure skating pair skaters mixed together. I don't think I need any more than that. That's the next one I would recommend to my mom. And the last one that I would recommend to her is Wow, No Thank You by Samantha Irby. This book is not like anything else that my mom reads, but I think that this would really educate my mom on my sense of humor. I think that's a challenge that we all have with adults in our life in general is we get older and our tastes change but to so many of our relatives we are the same person who like lived under their roof. And Wow No Thank You is an essay collection by Samantha Irby. She is the funniest goddamn motherfucking woman on this planet. I got this book during the pandemic and this just made my day. I would sit out in the sun, outside in my little bubble, just laughing out loud with how hilarious these essays are. She writes about IBS, bad dates, all kinds of misfortunes and mishaps. If you are looking for something to explain to your mom who you are now, the next books that I'm recommending came from my question box on Instagram. I'll have my Instagram link down below if you want to follow me. It's just a lot of pictures of my baby and also my monthly wrap ups. Usually go to Instagram a little bit earlier. They're just a lot more concise. I had posed the question, looking for a book recommendation for my mom who and the first one i got was for my mom who loves historical fiction but not too much romance i don't read a lot of historical fiction so this was a real head scratcher for me the first book that came to mind was the wonder by emma donahue this book takes place in the 1800s and it's about a nurse who is called in to watch this little girl whose family claims that she has survived without eating food for months. It is her job to sit with the girl, be in the house, make sure that she's not actually being fed secretly by her family and that this isn't some big publicity stunt, but also to make sure that the little girl is in good health and isn't being abused and like withheld food. This book is really emotional. There's a lot of debate in this book, a lot of moral dilemmas. You really find yourself in the position of the nurse who is extremely skeptical of the possibility of this. Of course, there's a lot of discussion on religion. It was really fascinating. I don't think there's a lick of romance in this book. So that fits the bill for that. This next one was for my mom who taught high school English for 30 years. For that, I'm going to recommend The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I really think this book is a modern classic. I think it's something that everyone, no matter what types of books they love, should read The Vanishing Half. It is just so masterfully crafted. The world is so immersive. There are some books where you just sit down to read them and you're just fully enveloped right away. And it's like the movie in your mind starts playing. You're just really swept along for the story. This is the story about two twin sisters who choose different paths in life. They are very like light skinned biracial women and one sister decides to pass as white and live her life as a white woman and so her history becomes the sort of secret to these like high society people that she finds herself socializing with and then we have the other sister who stays in their tiny hometown basically how her life ends up so much different from her sister so we get them together as their path split and then what eventually brings them back together. It's such a beautiful story. I absolutely loved it and I think that it is perfect for, you know, the English teacher who's used to reading classics like that. The next one is for a mom who is obsessed with Scrabble and card games. 
This was also hard for me. I don't think I've ever read a single book about Scrabble and I was really digging through my archives to find a book that had to do with card playing and things like that. The first one that really came to mind after some searching was I Am The Messenger by Marcus Zusak. It has been ages since I read this. I think I read it after I read The Book Thief back in college. The details are a little fuzzy, but I do know, thanks to Goodreads, that I gave it a five star. And this is about a sort of down on his luck young man. He's a cab driver. He's not really going anywhere in life and he plays cards with his friends, even though he sucks at it. And he becomes the witness accidentally to a bank robbery. After this, he starts getting cards in the mail. So there's our card tie-in. I do not remember how it all comes together. The other book I haven't read, but that I came across in my internet deep dive, and that is called Escapes by Daniel Tunnard. This one actually seems to have mixed reviews on Goodreads, but it sounds really fun to me. It deals with a scraphia. It is a book that has been described as being perfect for people who think that Scrabble should be a televised national sport. I think it takes place kind of in a future world where Scrabble is like a top sport. It's up there with like basketball and football. Scrabble. And there is of course a mafia mixed in with all the Scrabble playing. So it sounds like it's kind of nerdy but also a little bit fun. So that could be good for your Scrabble loving mom too. The next request I got was for a mom who was a corporate baddie for her entire career and is now retired. The first thing that I thought is, okay, so your mom's got time now. With that, I would recommend The Nix. This book is huge. It's not something that I casually recommend to people, even though I loved every page of this book. This book is about Samuel. He is a college professor. I believe he had a novel that was super popular and that he's been really struggling to write his next one. He's just kind of going nowhere. The wheels are spinning at this point. And then he gets a call that his mother has been charged of a federal crime for throwing a rock at a politician. He is really forced to reckon with who his mother was to him which was this housewife who married young and was like a dedicated wife, dedicated mother. And now she's like this radical hippie that's done this extreme thing. And so he's really reckoning with his mother, his mother's past. And now what this means for him as he has to deal with the fallout of his mother's crime. There are flashbacks to the Democratic National Convention here in Chicago in the 60s. The story is long winding, but it is a book that is really worth reading such a big ass book. And another recommendation that I would have for someone who is retired is M Train by Patti Smith. M Train is such a meditation on taking life slowly, enjoying your rituals, really appreciating the things that inspire you and really just slowing down life in a way for you to notice the things that inspire you. You start to get a feel for Patti Smith's routines, her rituals, the things that ground her. I think it would be perfect for someone who's just retired after a busy corporate life and who is now finally able to really slow down. And I think this book would actually be great for anyone who is really looking to connect more with their life and enjoy what's right in front of them. The next ask that I got was for the mom who loves Hallmark movies. I can also relate to this because my mom also really loves Hallmark movies. Like the Hallmark movie, it's very romantic, very fluffy, not a lot of smut, not my vibe, but I think I've got you with the book recommendations. The first one that I'm going to recommend is One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This is about a plus size beauty blogger who gets drunk one night and goes on an online tirade about a bachelor like TV series and how it's so obsessed with skinny people and how somebody like her would never be for the love interest 
and the producers of the show are like, actually we would. Would you like to be the main squeeze on this TV show? And it's kind of fluffy. There's not a whole lot of smut in this book. There is the romance angle as B starts to meet the different guys, the different contestants that want to be with her. And it's really fun in that way because you are constantly guessing which one it's going to be. From what I remember, a lot of the sexy scenes are kind of like a fade to black moment. I will say there is a lot of that phobia in this book. Of course, B puts herself in this public spotlight and she's not the conventionally thin contestant that would be on a show like this. And there are a lot of clips of the sort of hate that she is getting from viewers and from the douchey guys that are a contestant on this show. But I think overall it's a really fun read and especially for someone who loves that sort of wistful type of romance. Now if your mom loves smut, I would recommend Actor Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This book is the third book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. The setting of this story is so perfect for a Hallmark movie loving mom. In this book we have Eve. She is sort of failing at everything. She can't keep a job. She's very privileged, so she sort of doesn't feel the need to connect herself to anything. Once a commitment gets too deep and too serious, she immediately backs out and really self-sabotages herself. One day, her parents sit her down and they're like, we're cutting you off. So she's driving around, she's very aimless, and she stops in at this bed and breakfast who is looking for a cook. What really cinches the deal is when she almost runs over the owner of this bed and breakfast with her car and so she feels like she has to work there out of obligation and he gives her the job. So we have this sort of surly bed and breakfast owner and then this very flighty girl trying to get her life together. I think that is pretty much what every Hallmark movie is about but it is very very steamy. I actually got this request for recommendations multiple times and that is for the mom who loves true crime. I narrowed it down to three. Just kidding, four. <laughs> the first one I'm going to recommend is a little bit on the nose. Maybe if your mom has a dark sense of humor this would be perfect for her, but that is Small Sacrifices by Anne Rule. The one Anne Rule book that I have read is Small Sacrifices and it is about Diane Downs. Diane Downs was a mother of three children and one night she rushes into the emergency room and she says that she was stopped on a dark road in the middle of nowhere and this man opened fire on her three children. Diane instantly becomes a news starlet. People love her. She's the tearful mother. She doesn't know who did this. She has all of these strange details and finally these details don't make sense anymore. We learn a lot more about Diane and we learn about what has been motivating her all this time and Rula really creates an exciting story for this one. So if you have not done your deep dive on Diane Downs, I strongly, strongly recommend it. The next one is Mindhunter by John Douglas. Especially if your mom is an audiobook queen, Mindhunter is so great. It's long, but I actually thought that the narrator was John Douglas because at these moments of revelation and excitement, he sounded so proud and it's not John Douglas that narrates it, but he does do a really great job. John Douglas was an FBI agent who essentially created the behavioral sciences unit that of course we now know as profiling. In his time of creating this method for identifying killers and finding killers, he talked to many of them and there are a lot of them in the pages of this book. There is a lot of backstory of how he became an FBI agent and what the process was like as he developed this system for identifying these unique traits. John Douglas is often criticized as being kind of cocky but 
honestly. If I was the one to create the entire system that millions of TV shows, books have been created based upon and that has actually helped to find many, 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 many killers since then, I'd probably be a little cocky too. I would also recommend The Road to Jonestown by Jeff Gwynn. This is about Jim Jones and it honestly blew my mind the entire time. It is so long that you look at it and you're like, that's gotta be boring as shit. And I promise you it is not. He really weaves the entire tale of Jim Jones from humble beginnings to tragic end. And it's very unbiased to a certain point. Like I was reading the beginning of it and I was like, Do I agree with Jim Jones? Because he was a socialist. He really believed in racial equality. He really wanted his church to help people that were less fortunate than them. But of course, a little bit of a megalomaniac and of we all know how that spun out of control. This book is so fascinating for such a long book. Your heart is just racing at the end. And the last book that I would recommend for that one is actually a fiction book that I just finished and that is The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I think this is a great book for the true crime obsessed. It follows Shay Collins. She is a true crime blogger with a website called The Book of Cold Cases. In a chance encounter, she meets a woman named Beth Greer, who is this infamous figure in their small Pacific Northwest town because in the 70s she was charged with murdering two men and was ultimately acquitted. She's very mysterious, very rich, and and against all odds she grants Shay an opportunity to interview her about the lady killer murders. I really enjoyed this book and I think that anyone who loves a true crime podcast will really find themselves attached to Shay. And there's so much more than just true crime. There's like a little paranormal angle in there that I wasn't expecting too. We'll hear more about it in my April wrap up, but definitely recommend The Book of Cold Cases as well for the true crime loving mom. And the last request that I had gotten was for recommendations for a mom who loves classic TV and autobiographies. And so I decided to go for a fictional angle with these recommendations. The first one would be Daisy Jones and the Six. And the second one is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, both by Taylor Jenkins Reid. When you sit down to read Daisy Jones and the Six, you think it's real. It reads like an interview. It is somebody interviewing a band who was famous in the 60s and 70s and that had a really complicated dynamic within it. I knew that it was fiction going into it and I still found myself wanting to search Daisy Jones and the Six on Spotify. I was so convinced it was real. Taylor Jenkins Reid does such a great job at convincing us of the realness of these characters. And I'm prepared to be shamed, but I have not read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo yet. I think this also ties both of those things in together. Evelyn Hugo is an aging Hollywood icon who has never let herself be interviewed by anyone. And finally, she allows this woman to write the ultimate biography about her. Like I said, I have not read this one, but if Taylor Jenkins reads other books are any indicator, it's going to be addicting. It's definitely going to capture that really Hollywood glam sort of element and it's about a biographer. Those are all of the Mother's Day book recommendations that was requested for me and that I wanted to give myself. If you're curious about my personal Mother's Day recommendation, like what I'm hoping for, it's this little book called Massage Gift Card. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this hasn't been too terribly long and I hope that you found some great recommendations for your mother, a mother in your life, or just someone that you like. If you are new here, please be sure to subscribe and like this video. Leave a comment down below with 
books that your mom likes to read or the book that you will be gifting her this year. I promise I will not tell her. And like I said, I am going to have all of these recommendations linked down below through Bookshop. P.S. Am I the only one who can't hear the word mother without hearing Danzig? Mother. Anyway, happy Mother's Day to you if you are a mother, if you are celebrating your mother, and happy you day if you're not celebrating Mother's Day. I appreciate all of you for being here and happy reading. Cheers!